Welcome to The Breakdown, where we break down all the controversial movies. Today, we revisit a film I did a while ago called Kids, one of Larry Clark's films that has been called a wake-up call to the world. The film details the delinquent adventures of Tilly and his friend Casper, played by the late Justin Pierce. I've seen Justin Pierce firstly from the film Next Friday, where, where he played a pothead. But sadly, Justin left this world by his own hand back in 2000. Telly and Casper are both like sex freaks, but seemingly have a fetish for girls who haven't had sex before. So I should state that the purpose of this video and the series is to recap controversial and extreme films. So if you've seen this before and is expecting a conceptual or insightful video, then you are in the wrong place. So we now can see what happens on the grain on Kids, which has a screenplay written by Harmony Kareem the creator of Gummo and many other weird films. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Kid starts off with our main character, Telly, swapping tongue with this unnamed girl. It's unsure how old Telly is, but maybe 18 or a little younger, but the girl is for sure 12 or 13. Come on, bruh, chill with this ugly ass kissing. But you know how kids are. Telly tells her he wants to have sex, but she's like, she don't want to have a baby. To get her panties off, he uses his tired ass game, also promising it won't hurt. This promise persuades the girl to have sex, and it's during the sex that Telly reveals that virgins are the most pleasurable and safest sexual encounter for him. Also, even though he promised it didn't hurt, her cries fall on deaf ears. After the sex, Telly leaves swiftly. Obviously, the sex is all he cared about. Outside waiting is his homeboy Casper, who is like a twisted version of my homeboy Smoke. Shout out to him, I know he watching. But Casper gets the fresh scoop on this sexual encounter Telly had. The conversation between the two has a tragic comic tone, with Telly all like, Oh my god, so good, dude. That girl. Fuck, she can fuck you Casper's verbiage can be pretty funny sometimes, but the way he and Telly brag about virgins, even smelling the lingering coochie that Telly's fingers still has, got me looking at both these cats weird. Most of this careless conversation paints Telly as a dirty bastard for wanting to have sex with pubescent virgin girls and having complex fantasies about it too. Deflowering a girl gives Telly and Casper a sense of strength, knowing that they are the only ones that did take that virginity. The next plan is to shoplift from an Asian store owner, with Telly distracting him saying, You happen to have this dick? What is this dick? Said this dick, motherfucker. Don't you understand English? These kids are on Nathan Drake thievery. The two then head to a friend's apartment looking for drugs, food, and fun times. Outside though, Casper gives this little girl one of the peaches he stole. Yeet! They hop in their homeboy's crib, who are all watching skateboard videos and doing whippets. On the phone though, Telly gets a message from a girl named Jenny, another girl he had sex with and ditched. She is played by a famous controversial film actress named Chloe Savigny. She also played as Dot in the film Gummo that we have a video on as well. Jenny is a bit angry at him for ditching her, but virginity and all that isn't something so precious for this group of girls. They all want to get their fuck on. Both boys and girls talk about their sexual encounters. Sometimes the boys might say something that the girls will contradict later. For example, the boys might say, man, y'all know girls love giving head. But the girls might say, I hate giving head, stuff like that. Looks like sex and partying are all that these kids really know. The conversation then shifts to AIDS and sexual diseases. And Ruby here, played by you know who that is, describes how a week ago, she and Jenny got tested. Let's flash back to last week. Jenny had unprotected sex with just one person, who we know was Telly. Ruby had sex with like nine people. She even did some anal more than half of those times. Seven days later, we will reveal the results of the test, and that day is today. Meanwhile, Telly and Casper tell more vulgar stories as they go to the subway. They skip the ticket and wait for the train, finding a blind musician very interesting. Meanwhile again, Jenny and Ruby are waiting for the results of their tests. 
Ruby is called in first and Jenny is called in next. Ruby, despite all her sexual experiences, is lucky and tested negative for any STD. Jenny, however, tested positive for HIV, even though she's only had sex with one person. In other words, Telly gave her HIV that would surely affect her well-being and cause other burdens. I understand that now it's probably a lot better to live with HIV, but during that time, was it a lot scarier or maybe even a death sentence? Anyway, I'm not sure about the transmission rate of HIV, but I'm sure this could mean that the young girl from the beginning possibly has HIV too. While Jenny takes in the bad news, Telly and Casper are on the train, where Telly mentions that he wants to have sex with another 13-year-old girl named Darcy. First, they plan on going home into the park, but their conversation gets stopped, watching a man with no legs singing I have no legs. While the Nympho duo ride to the next stop, Jenny is desperately trying to cope with the bad card she was dealt. She finds a goal in locating Telly to tell him the bad news and also prevent him from spreading it. Telly and Casper later go to Telly's place, telling his mom that they was trying to find jobs. Telly asks for money, while Casper just stares at her breastfeeding. But since she said no to the money, they steal it from her purse, along with playing around with her other belongings. They then go to Telly's room, talking more about Darcy and if she might be at the NASA club. Now, the plan is to go to the park to get drugs and look for Darcy. A tribe called Quest song Oh My God plays while they trade for drugs in the park, eventually hanging out with a crew that rolls deep. The most important figure in this group though is Harold. He's gonna be along for some more crazy things that will happen tonight. Telly dips to ask where Darcy is, but one thing that sucks is that Casper and this whole crew verbally bullies this gay couple doing nothing but walking. Casper then starts skating, but accidentally runs into Dave Chappelle. It turns almost into a fight between them, but Harold hits him from behind and everybody jumps the man. Getting jumped and beat so disrespectfully is so pussy-like, honestly. I don't know why people can feel so tough after jumping somebody. If it was a fair fight, I'm sure Casper would have been on the ground snoozing though. Meanwhile, Jenny is riding in a taxi, but the driver notices her upset face. According to her, everything is wrong and fucked right now. But the man is like, not everything. The sun's still shining. You woke up this morning, not everything messed up. He says, if you want to be happy, don't think or don't complicate things. I'm glad they included this man into the movie. Next, Telly calls out for Darcy outside her house. And here she is, obviously smitten by this mole rat head ass dude. The plan is to go swimming real quick before they have a party with some associates. They do wonder if they killed that man earlier when they jumped him. It definitely was a tough assault. Darcy and them then sneak inside of some place to swim, still completely mobile as Jenny looks for them. Telly spits his tired ass game, learning Darcy's mom is pretty overprotective over her. The fact that she is here though shows that is bullshit. Things get a bit crazy in the pool, but Overall, the two agree to go to some party tonight. While the party is setting up, Jenny is in the NASA club, assuming Telly is there. She walks around looking for him, but she gets intercepted by this crazy kid named Fidget. Fidget is played by Harmony Kareem. He shows her amazing sexual exploitation, but then gives her some pills that make Special K look weak. We see later it's a depressant. As Jenny gets drugged up, here's that party that Telly was talking about. I didn't mention it before, but Casper becomes more dislikable as the film went on, especially when he acting like this. That's not your real name. Nobody's saying this. That's my real name, bitch. Why did you ask me this for, huh? Damn, why you some fucking wait for anyway, huh? He was kind of funny at first, but as other people in the film questioned his attitude, so did I. Sex is also held in high regard with these young people, but it was like that when I was in middle school and high school too. Lying about sex seems to make some people like this kid here fit in. Telly ain't in the party yet though, but the search has pretty much halted because Jenny is under the effects of that pill. Soon though, a girl tells her that Telly is at a party we just saw, and so she slowly makes her way to the party as Telly gets closer to his goal outside the party. 
While everybody is doing sexual things, these three kids are getting lit. It's hard for me to not see my little brother in this group. He would get slapped. Ironically though, it's an older brother of one of these kids that has enabled this scene. On the ride to the party, Jenny repeats to herself that she won't die. Do you think she means because HIV was terrible at that time or that the drug has her feeling more sicker than anything? Probably both. At the party, everybody is passed out, but Telly brings in Darcy to have sex with her. She comes into the party room as the other two get kissing. She says she's kind of scared like the girl in the beginning. Sadly though, they get to sex and Jenny sees that she was too late and lets things happen. She then goes to the couch crying herself to sleep. Casper wakes up from her party craze, walking around the ruined hotel and drinking any leftover beer. He sees Tilly and Darcy asleep, but then goes to the couch sitting next to Jenny. He sees a lot of people got busy tonight except for him. He tests to see if Jenny is awake, but she is pretty much unresponsive. Sadly, he takes advantage of her drug-fueled slumber by sodomizing her without her consent but also exposing himself to HIV as well. Next, Random Frames assist Telly as he speaks in a voiceover. He explains how fucking is what he loves and take that away and he's got nothing. The movie ends as Casper wakes up after that party, giving an unscripted and improvised line as a result of that crazy party. Jesus Christ, what happened? So, the reason why this film is on this channel is because it was controversial, especially since we have kids doing drugs and, and doing other sexual stuff. But I like this movie because kids really do be like this, especially back in the 90s. The threat of getting an STD is scary enough to just use your hands to pleasure yourself. But so many dudes out here find masculinity and confidence in habitually having sex. Well. That was kids, but we aren't done yet. Now let's talk about the most disturbing moment and most enjoyed moment, and that's spooky stuff. Cue the Gohan. Have you ever heard that song Guilty Conscience by Eminem? It's like a song where Dr. Dre plays the good conscience while Eminem plays the bad conscience, and they mention this movie when a situation similar to what Casper did at the end comes up. So let's get right into it. The most disturbed moment is probably somewhere in between Jenny's assault and realizing that the girl from the beginning could have HIV now. It sucks to see young people have their lives sort of damaged from doing things that at the end of the day don't really matter. The most enjoyable moment was probably a mix of Casper's character and that taxi guy who told Jenny to keep a smile on her face. So I hope you guys like this recap of kids, but I still think this is one of those movies you should watch for yourself one day. Here on the left is Harmony Kareen's film Gummo, another film showing nihilistic individuals living in Xenia, Ohio. On the right is another Larry Clark film titled Ken Park. Another film about sexually excited teens who all have bad home lives. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.